So I said in front of a statue of Our Lady that I'm ready to, to sacrifice this relationship and he was the love of my life. You wrapped me under I never questioned this decision and, and actually I never asked any questions and it didn't happen what exactly happened um, in Metrogoria. I just knew it was special for both of us. All he said to her that I've already decided to get baptised when that couple came the other night. Even from the very moment of conception, when my you know, life was at risk, my mum's life was at risk, she, she was there, she saved my life. She saved my life when I was drowning. Hi, my name is Kasia. I'm, I'm 34 years old. I'm originally from Poland, but currently live in the UK with my lovely husband, Paul. So I was brought up in a sort of Catholic background. My, both of my parents were Catholic. So I always used to go to mass, um, attend like religion lessons. And I never, to be honest, when I was growing up, I never used to get into any trouble. When my mom was pregnant, um, she became pregnant when she was 40 years old. So ev everyone was saying, you know, that what, what are you doing, sort of thing, because you're getting older, you've already got two kids, and, um, and now you're just gonna have another child. So she was a bit worried about uh, pregnancy complications and things like this. And uh, one day when she went for a routine scan, um, doctor, doctors couldn't believe because the, the placenta was becoming detached. So the obvious complication would be my death and um, my mum's life was in danger as well due to um, risk of internal bleeding. So from, from that day, it was about halfway through pregnancy. It was a high-risk pregnancy, so she was admitted to hospital. Back then, um, it was like well, over 30 years ago, all pregnancies were high-risk, were uh, admitted to hospital and it was on strict bed rest. So uh, my mom was confined to bed throughout the whole pregnancy. And she, what she did was she was praying rosary every day. Um, and obviously I'm still here. So the pregnancy was successful and I was born on 7th of October, uh, 1988, which was the, the feast of uh, Lady of Rosary. And ever since then, although I wasn't not very close to to, to Jesus or to her, um, I, I was convinced that she's a very significant figure in my life and um, that she's looking over me and she's protecting me. Lovely lady dressed in blue, teach me how to pray. God was once your little boy. Tell me what to say Did you lift him up sometimes gently on your knee? Did you sing to him the way that my mother does to me? Did you hold his hand at night? Did you ever try telling stories of the Oh, when did he cry? Do you really think he cares if I tell him things, little things that happen? And do the angels' wings make a noise? Can he hear me if I speak low? Can he understand me now? You know, lovely lady, tell me, for you know. When I was growing up, I sort of thought that my life was, was boring because, I, you know, I used to go to church and my mom made me pray. Like, I didn't want to pray, but she would, like, get me on my knees and we would pray together. And I was thinking, like, you know, nobody else, that is just me. Um, 
so I was sort of like craving for this independent life and you know the parties and things like that. So when I was 18 I decided to, to move abroad to uh, university and sort of like a start, start um, a new life. Um, and initially I enjoyed it, I loved it. Like I, I love the independence, I love making my, earning my own money, um, going out, but things got out of control. Uh, so I used to go out literally like two or three times a week, um, be up all night, uh, maybe go, go, go home for an hour and go out again at the party or go to university. I mean, it was it was really bad. Like it's actually embarrassing thinking about it now. I'm a completely different person. But th there were times as well when, for example, I used to go lectures and I, I would go to the pub and had like good few shots, few drinks, and then go lectures or. When, when it came to writing assignments, I, I used to be um, sad there were like a bottle of wine and, and things like this. So um, yeah, it was a bit embarrassing. I mean, I suppose people go through that phase, but um, I sort of, um, it, it carried on for a good few years. For some reason, I really got attracted to this sort of like free lifestyle and sort of free for all, um, just because People that did, led this lifestyle, they seemed very happy and joyful and, you know, I thought if, if they do and they're okay, I'll be fine as well. Um, so this is, this is why I just carried on drinking and, and going out, partying, uh, being in different relationships. After some time, the, the life was becoming um, sort of meaningless. I'm thinking, what is this about? What's next? What's my purpose in life? And uh, this is when I, when I started questioning my life, when I sort of thought, I felt like a sort of prodigal daughter or prodigal son. So I thought, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to go back to faith. But it actually turned out to be more difficult than, than I thought it would be, because by that point I was probably in my 20s, so we're talking quite a few good years of partying. Um, and not only this actually, what what's also people don't realise, especially young people as well, um, Doing things like horoscope or tarot cards and things like this, it's, it's not just fun, it's not just a game. Whether you believe it or not, it completely affects your life um, and it's actually very, very dangerous. Before I went to Walsingham, to be honest, I wasn't sure what, what Walsingham is about. I just knew it was a shrine of Our Lady and I suppose that, that was good enough because people I spoke to so many people and they said, oh, you need to go, it's absolutely amazing. My life was transformed when I attended Walsingham. Um, so I thought uh, I would give it a go. But that, that invitation was quite unexpected because at that moment in time, I actually didn't have money again. Um, I had different plans, um, but I had two, two weeks annual leave. So I thought, you know, I really didn't want to go. But I thought since I, since I was invited and everything was paid for, then, you know, I would go, why not? But I, I had a sort of attitude about it as well. Um, so when we arrived to Walsingham, I was sort of, I had this attitude that I'm, I'm not leaving my tent because I was staying in, in a tent at that time. You know, no one's gonna make me do anything that I don't want to do. And um, yeah, that I would just do my own thing. So the opening mass, I was late to that mass and, uh, and I was actually happy that I was late because I thought, you know, the quicker we get in Donvan with, the, the better, so we can go and do something else. So um, I, I went to the big tent and I sat at the very back of the tent next to the exit and I had my, my arms crossed and I, you know, didn't want to be there. Uh, but something happened during that mass. Um, I can't tell you even what it was, but I felt like the sort of like defensive um, attitude and the, the walls that I've built around my heart, they were absolutely broken. And that was through a lot of flower Lord uh, Jesus who, who actually just opened my heart and completely healed me from within. But that was through, um, through intercessions of, of Mary again. Um, she was patient of, of that place. I definitely feel like uh, Mother Mary is, is calling us uh, by, by our name, so she co personally called me to go to Walsingham so I, to, I could experience the liberating love of Jesus Christ and I was never, I was never the same after that. So what else happened that week? I attended one of the, the healing ministries and do you remember when I was telling you about uh, drowning when I was a bit younger? Um, I didn't know, but for that experience, 
a spirit of sort of like fear uh, had g gripped hold of me and had control over my life. And I was completely, I didn't even know about all this. It was for the prayer and for the intentions of Mary that it all came came to light. And I was uh, I was healed when I was in Molsingham. And that was completely um, life-changing in a way that um, I became fearless again. I, I got my joy back. I felt like I was a um, better person, becoming a better person, um, if you like. And I was so full of life and I had so many plans. And ever since then, I got to do things that I never thought I would do. And it's it's all for the intentions of, of, of Mary again. So after coming from Walsingham, I was I was praying to Mary and I was thinking, you know, what's next? What else can we do together? Um, and at that time, I was in a relationship with, with my current husband, but at the time he was my my boyfriend. And he he's just an amazing person. He's uh, so genuine, so kind-hearted. But there was just one thing that was really bothering me. Um, he wasn't. You know, he wasn't baptized, he wasn't in faith. Although he was a good person, he didn't have that, um, you know, personal relationship with, with Jesus or, or with Mary, actually. So I, I would never make him choose whether, you know, I, w I wouldn't say like, you know, get ba baptized or, or, or that's it, we, we end this. Because, you know, I loved him so much and I would never, um, I will never ask him to do to such a thing because he'll be taking away his freedom. So I didn't know what else to do. Uh, and it was sort of like, um, getting on to the point that, you know, at that point we were together for about probably three years or maybe a bit longer. And it's sort of decisions time because I knew that I wanted to have a Catholic family. I wanted to be in faith. I didn't want to lose again what I lost in the past. And I, I didn't want to go through the same, through the same pain of, of conversion. So I knew it's, it's God is the only way. Um, so I went to Walsingham again. And I went with intention to to pray for for Paul and, and for his conversion. Uh, when I got to Walsingham, I just made this prayer and, and promise because eventually um, I just felt it was only only right thing to do, and I would never sacrifice God again. So I said in front of a statue of Our Lady that I'm ready to to sacrifice this relationship, and He was the love of my life. So it, it was not it was not an easy thing to do whatsoever because it, you know some might, might just say that oh, I, I didn't care, but it was you know my heart was torn apart. But I said God that I choose you, and I give a Paul to you, uh, Mother Mary, and. If there's anything that you can do, because I've tried everything else, and you know, sort of now is the time. Um, so, as I was leaving Walsingham, so someone said, uh, "Why don't you just, you know, uh, go to Metrogoria?" But I didn't think any anything of it really. I just carried on, and I met a second and a third person that told me about uh, Metrogoria, which, um, and the third person said to me, you know. If, if someone's mentioned it to you before and I'm the third person telling you to go, this is your personal invitation from Mother Mary to go to Metrogoria. So when I got back uh, from Walsingham, um, not much changed. Like obviously he probably didn't want to get baptized or hear about it again. Um, so. I sort of knew that I had to somehow get him to Metrogoria. And now imagine that someone that, you know, is not praying, not in faith, getting him to go on a Marian pilgrimage would be sort of a task. So I approached it from a different angle and I said, why don't we go on holidays to Croatia? And while we're there, there's, you know, this small town uh, called Metrogoria and I always wanted to go. So why, why don't we go while we're there? So obviously he didn't mind. Uh, so planning uh, the trip to Metrogoria and um, Croatia was, wasn't that easy because we both got ill. Um, Paul was in very much pain and he needed different painkillers, including even morphine. So it, wa it wasn't an easy thing at all for both of us, but we managed, it was probably a month after visit to Molsingam, we managed to organize everything and we, we flew to Metrogoria. While we were there, we both got, you know, I came actually with pneumonia and, um, and he was, he needed surgical operations after, after the Metrogoria. But while, while we were there, I really, really wanted to go to the, the Cross Mountain. And I just had this desire 
just to be in the presence of the relics of the of the Holy Cross. So you can just imagine that he, he was in absolute agony. Um, we managed to do it while you know while, while he was climbing. He was taking all sorts of painkillers. At one point, he was even like, even drinking like liquid morphine from the bottle. But we, we got to the top, and we didn't say anything. We didn't say a word. We just both we both cried. And I just knew something happened, but I, I didn't like, exactly knew what it was. So we we went down, um, we came down the mountain again in complete silence. And when we got to the bottom of the mountain, I just turned around and, and asked him, so, you know, do you want to get baptized? <laughs> and he said, yeah. I never questioned this decision, and, and actually, I never asked any questions, and I didn't happen what exactly happened um, in Metrogoria. I just knew it was special for both of us. And um, it's absolutely amazing how Mary, how I prayed to Mary again in Walsingham for the second time. And um, she invited us to, to Metrogoria personally, and this amazing thing happened because if, if you knew Paul before, you you know, he was very strict, like, yeah, I'm not getting baptized, church, mass, this is not for me. And something just switched like that. And we just never looked back. When we got back from um, from Metrogoria, I just knew that, you know, time was very precious and we had to get the things, you know, moving sort of thing. So so we organized everything, but this is, it, it's unbelievable how difficult it is to actually get baptized as an adult in the UK. So it was a massive challenge. And again, I was running out of options because I was, being told I need to wait for two years, uh, attend this course and things like this. And I sort of knew that we don't have that much time. First of all, because he was very ill, um, ended up in hospital. And second of all, because I knew that, you know, that evil spirits would do anything just to stop um, him becoming, um, you know, a child of God, uh, being baptized. So I, I don't even know how that happened again, but, you know, it was through for prayers because I was praying rosary and I was asking for the for the right person and for the right time. And I sort of get this sense got the sense to to approach this priest that I didn't really know that well. So one night we just knocked on his door and he, he just couldn't believe that that you know the story and you know the pair of strangers are knocking on his door. Uh, but he, he agreed to um, to get uh, Paul prepared for the confirmation from baptism and first, first Holy Communion. And from that moment, so that was uh, we're talking that was end of September, October. It was actually October when we went. So from October, it was five months, 31st of March, 2018, he got baptized. He received First Holy Communion and confirmation in Catholic Church, thanks to Mary. Mary, I entrust myself totally to you. My body, my soul, my good. So I feel like us getting married was, you know, it was a um, per perfectly cemented union between obviously me and Paul, but also between the two of us and Mary, our mother, and sort of we were ready for the next step or next adventure in our life. Um, but Mary had something else in, in mind. Um, so while I was at the university, again, I was moved to a different class. I wasn't even supposed to be there. And I come across this um, young girl and we actually became friends. She was a Catholic and her husband was a Muslim. And he was unfortunately diagnosed with end-stage cancer. And once we were invited to the house, and we sort of casually just shared our story, and I said how Mary saved my life, and how she had a massive impact on me as a person, and how I became the sort of best version of myself I was always supposed to be, but it was sort of like stolen from me, the identity in Christ. And then Paul shared this amazing story of his conversion. Her husband sort of didn't say anything, he was just listening, and it, was, it wasn't long after, literally, it was probably like a couple of weeks after that my friend asked him, you know, w would you want to get baptized? And all he said to her that 
I've already decided to get baptized when that couple came um, the other night. So yeah, I want to get baptized. And um, he was received to Catholic Church and he asked Paul to be his godfather. And without speaking to each other, they actually even picked the same baptismal um, or conf name for the confirmation, which was Mark, which I think he was very significant as well. And it, it's, it's another sort of miracle that happened through the, the intercessions of, of Mary. I think just in a nutshell, it's just enough to look at facts and what, what happened in my life, just to have no doubts whatsoever that Mary's has always been there in my life and always uh, looked over my shoulder. Even from the very moment of conception, when my you know life was at risk, my mom's life was at risk, she, she was there, she saved my life. She saved my life when I was drowning. She saved my life when I was completely going in the wrong direction, away from God, when I was into the, the wilderness of this world and didn't care about God, religion, didn't care about anything. She really gently um, called me to conversion. And she she was she was so gentle and sensitive. She, she never sort of like pushed the will onto me. She was always reaching out and gently just um, guiding me to, to Jesus through, through different events, through people. Um, and she, the, the only thing I can say to anyone, whether, whether you believe now or not, your little yes, like Fiat, like Mary said, when she conceived Jesus, that is enough for God and He can just do anything with you. He can completely transform your life. And if He's done that to me, and at the, you know, there were times that I wasn't even asking for conversion. I wasn't even asking to, you know, for my life to be different. Um, Mary reached out and started that for me. So she, you know, is so precious in the, in the eyes of God and He wants you to be happy and he wants you to fulfill your dreams and deepest desires of your heart. He's done that for me and he will do the same for you. My name is Michael O'Neill and the Miracle Hunter. We're looking at the miraculous icons of the Virgin Mary from all around the world. A famous one from Croatia, mother of Bistrica, is one of these black Madonnas that are seen all throughout all of Europe. In this case, in, it was made around 1400, but it was buried for safekeeping in protection from the Turks. But in 1525, a supernatural light shone upon that spot and they rediscovered where it was buried. In 1588, they had to bury it in the walls again. And in 1684, it was discovered another time. In 1930, this was, she was declared the mother of Croatia and became known as one of the most famous Marian icons in all of Christian history. Are you searching for purpose of life? <laughs> Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.